Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to exploit JWTs or JSON web tokens. These are becoming more popular for people to try and exploit, whether it is in penetration testing, CTFs, or bug bounty. So we're going to go ahead and look at these, but there is a few things I want you to know. Sometimes JWTs can be really difficult to get to exploit. This specific vulnerability that we're going to be looking at in Hack the Box on the machine, the notebook, actually it took me quite a long time to figure out how to get this private key to be authenticated. So I'm going to walk you through how to exploit this JWT so that way you can look for these on your own in the wild. But just know that JWTs, sometimes it take a lot of trial and error in order to get them to exploit properly. Even in this video, I'm going to make a, a couple of mistakes, but ultimately we are going to get it exploited. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So here we are. I have the box, the notebook already up. I am inside of a directory called the notebook. So I am ready to go ahead and get started. Okay. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and you can come over here and register. I've already registered an account. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And once you have logged in, you'll be brought to this page. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you just like how to straight get to where we're going. Um, we can open up burp. We can turn our proxy on. We can intercept the request and then we'll go ahead and send this to repeater. But what we notice right away is that we have this cookie and we have the auth right here and we have this UUID. So we have this user ID. This isn't something you're going to be able to brute force very easily. So we're going to give a look at the cookie right here. So we'll go ahead and turn the intercept off, come over to repeater where we sent the cookie. And you'll notice that we have these little periods or full stops right here, depending on where you're at in the world. And what you can do is I love the burp smart decoder is just highlight this first section and you're going to see over here what it is doing. It tells us that it is going to go out to the local host on port 77 and it's going to try and grab this private key. Now, what is happening with this? When it reaches out to the local host, it's going to see if our cookie or our authentication over here is valid and it's going to see if the private key can match it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a private key so that we can self authenticate. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're just going to change this section right here. So what we'll do is we'll put in our hack the box IP and see if it will reach out to us, which I am 10, 10, 14, four, and we'll apply changes. Now, when you apply changes over here, you're going to notice that it puts this base 64 equals equals in here like this. So if you look over here, we got these equals, we're going to delete and then that D right there. So we'll delete that. And now if we set up a netcat listener over here, we can see if it reaches back out to us. So if we send this and we come back over to our terminal, we can see that it tried to reach out to us on port 7070 because we put our own IP address in here, right here, and it's trying to get this private key. The problem is we don't have this private key, so it hangs and we're not able to do anything by changing this little bit of information. So what we'll do is close that, and now we can go to jwt.io and we can paste this in and get a full look at what is going on. But before we do, what I would probably test if I was in the wild is I would just grab this right here and I would probably take this false and I would go and I would say true. We'll delete the base 64 over here, but this isn't going to work because we don't have the authentication there for us. So it's going to tell us that we still need to log in right here, right there. It says we need to log in. So we need to make that private key that is reaching out to grab. So we'll go ahead and copy this entire thing and go to jwt.io and we'll come down and we'll paste it in right here. And now you can give a look at what we have going on right here. So we have what we changed right here. We have our IP address and it's going to grab this private key. But if we scroll down, it's going to tell us we have an invalid signature. So we need to create our own signature in order to get this to work. So what we need to do is come to our terminal. I'm going to open up a new terminal. We'll make this big. We'll CD desktop and we'll come over to the notebook and we're going to have to 
create an SSH key. The difference between this SSH key that we're gonna make and a normal one is we're gonna end up having to change it just a little bit and I'll show you that when we get there. So we're gonna say SSH key gen with this dash T and then I'm gonna type the rest of this out and then I'll go ahead and explain to you what we have going on. So here we have the full SSH key gen that we're gonna do. We're gonna give it a, we're gonna tell it we want the type RSA, we want block 4090, we're gonna be using the method of PEM and you can go out to Google and check out the SSH key gen uh, methods. I think they're somewhere around like seven or eight and I could be way off on that, um, but you'll be able to see what these do. And for the sake of the JSON web token, we're gonna be using this. And we're gonna be calling this the private key because over here we have this get private key. So we're trying to get a private key. So we want our file to be called private key. But because we're gonna be changing this in a little bit, I'm just gonna put a one right here because it'll make it easier for us when we change it in the future. So we'll go ahead and create this. It's gonna tell us it's generating. We don't want to pass phrase. If we ls, we now have our private key one and our private key pub down here. So if we cat our private key one right here, let's see what this looks like. We can actually just grab this as it is and put it in to our signature and see if we can get a valid signature with this. So we'll copy and paste that into this bottom one right here and we'll need to transform this one our pub key right here in order to get this to work because if we cat the private key right here you're going to see that this looks like an ssh key and we don't want it to look like an ssh key we want it to look more like it is going to authenticate the request that we're going to make from the web browser. So we're going to have to change this and we're going to use OpenSSL to do that. I'm going to type out the command so you don't got to watch me do that and then I'll walk you through what we're doing. Okay, so here is the command. We're going to be using the RSA and we're going to be telling it in, we want to take in this private key and we want to put out in the PEM format a private key. And notice I changed this so we don't have the one right here and this right here matches what we have over here because it's gonna we're gonna host up this private key that we're making right now over here so that it'll come out and it'll grab that pi private key and it'll act like we are the back end and it's gonna authenticate for us every time we need to make a request. So we'll go ahead and change that. And if we cat this private key, where are you right here? You're gonna notice that it looks way different. This is in the form of a certificate. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to copy the entire thing, but we may have to delete these equals equals to get this to work. I don't remember. No, it actually works for us. So it says signature verified. I actually wanna test this. If we delete those, yes, it does tell us the signature is still verified here for us. So we can actually grab this um, token or this cookie that we just made. So command A, command copy, and we should now be able to come back over here and inspect this and go to storage. And this is where our cookie is stored. We should be able to paste in our cookie, but you might remember that we need to host this up. So we'll go sudo python2, and we're gonna host it up on 7070. So that way when we make this request, it's gonna reach out to us and grab our cookie from our server that we just created over here and tell it that we are authenticated. So we'll go ahead and type in our password and we are now hosting this up. So let's refresh this and see what happens. It did work, we, we were able to grab this admin panel. And for the sake of this box, what you would do is you would come over to the upload and we'll find out through our upload that we do end up with the ability to upload a PHP shell to get a reverse shell on this specific machine, but we're not gonna go that far because we're just looking at JSON web tokens. So we can come back over to our file that we're hosting up and you can see we have our server and it came out and grabbed the private key and it worked for us. And our private key over here is in fact authenticating our account so that we look like the admin, which we were able to change right over here in this section. So let me make sure we get the whole section highlighted right here. We changed this admin capabilities to true where it was false. 
So now we're able to access the admin panel as though we are admin. And every time we click around in here, it should come and authenticate over here on our server and it does. So now our server is acting as the backend instead of the local host. And then we're able to access the admin panel and then ultimately get a reverse shell. And that concludes this video on JSON web tokens. If you'd like to learn more about JWTs, please let me know down in the comments because there is a lot more examples and CTFs where we can go into more detail on how to exploit JWTs in the future. So please let me know if this is something you would like to see more of. Thanks for watching.